there's a nifty round trip workflow that you can do now from After Effects to Cinema 4D and back to After Effects. You can create 3D projects inside After Effects with cameras, lights, null object layers, and solid layers, export those projects to Cinema 4D, work on them there, and then see the results show up immediately inside After Effects where you can do further editing. To see how that works, I want you to open up an After Effects project. So go to Working Files, go to After Effects Project Files, and open up Export AEC4D. This comp has two solid layers, two lights, and a camera, plus this animation. And what's great is that you can export this comp to Cinema 4D where you can really jazz it up. So to see how that works, go up to File, Export, Maxon Cinema 4D Exporter, and I'm going to save this inside the My Exercise Files folder by going to the Desktop, Open this up. Let's save this as export test. And nothing happens. You need to import this file now into After Effects and then open it up inside Cinema 4D. So I double click here. I go there and double click on this to import it. Now I'm going to select it here and go edit, edit original. And that will open it up inside Cinema 4D. And there's our comp. It looks a little bit different because of the lighting and things like that, but there you go. Now what I want to do is I want to replace this solid layer with text. So I go up to the spline here. Click on text, and you can't see it. That's because it's up at the origin, and the origin's way up here, or way below the origin here in this particular project. So to bring text front and center, press the O key, the letter O, and it'll take you right to text. I want to extrude this, so I go up here and get the extrude NURBS, drag text into it, making a child of extrude NURBS. We can do kind of the routine that we normally do here. Click on extrude NURBS, make it a little bit thicker, add the fillet caps, like that. And now I want to put a really nice material on this. So I'm going to go to the Content Browser, go to Presets, Lights, Materials. I want to go to Glass in this particular case and bring this Glass Simple Red on there. Just drag it right to the text like that. Now I want to put this where that solid layer is. So I need to go back to the Objects Manager here. I'm going to open this up here like this. And there's that red solid. I'm going to click on that and go to its coordinates. I'm going to click on the letter P and I'm going to Control click on the letter R. That'll select all six of these properties. And now I go Control or Command C to copy that. And now I go to Extrude NURBS here like that. I have its coordinates active and they're going to be active as well. I do Control or Command V to paste those coordinates there. The text disappears, but that's because it's now gone to where the solid layer is. So I click on Extrude NURBS again, press the O key, and there we are. All right, so now my task is to adjust the text a little bit. So I'm going to pull back just a touch here. And we'll turn off that solid there by clicking that check mark. We can pull the text down toward the floor here. It'll be a little off here. It won't be quite straight because it wasn't straight in the After Effects project. See how it dips in there a little bit? We can always rotate it just a bit here, just a little bit to kind of adjust it. But we don't need to be perfect here. I just want to show you how to do this. Let's add some material to the floor here while we're at it. So go back to the Content Browser. And let's go up a notch here. Going down here to Surfaces. And get one of these tiles that I like so much. Drag that to the floor. And it's awfully bright. That's because the lights are too bright. Now, they're too bright in After Effects on purpose, but I want to show you that you can adjust them here. So go back to Objects here. Let's click on the Point Light. Look at it. See that it's at 200%. So let's right-click on these little arrows and knock that down to 100%. There you go. Look at the Spotlight. It's a little too bright, too. I'll go down to 100% there by right-clicking there. Let's add a little bit more texture to this material. Double-click on it over here and go to Bump like that and increase the strength so we can make this look a little more interesting. Pull it to the right like that. To really see this, we need to render this, so Control or Command R. Let's take a look at it now. Ah, oh, it looks great. Look at the reflections there. Looking very good. So I'm going to close this down now. And now I'll save this, Control or Command S to save it. Let's go back to After Effects. Now you won't see it here because it's not replacing this. It's just over here inside the project panel. If I take this and put this down here in the comp, I'm wasting my time because the lights here and the camera work only with 3D objects. And the Cinema 4D file is a 2D object, believe it or not. It's like a little movie. So I'm going to drag that down to the new item icon like that, make a new comp. And that's how it looks. Let's change the render from Software to Standard Final so we can see all the reflections and all the shadows. And that looks pretty darn good. And you know now you can take this back to Cinema 4D, make changes, and it will show up here inside this comp. All right, let's take a look at the vineyard here. I applied the 3D camera tracker to this vineyard, so I click on It. There's a 3D camera tracker. I click on it so you can see the track points. Go back toward the beginning here. The neat thing about the integration between the 3D camera tracker and Cinema 4D is that you can set the ground plane. We had some trouble finding the origin back there in that other comp, but we can find the origin here simply by setting it. I'm going to go over here and hover over the ground until I get something that looks like it's flat and on the surface like that. And I click on that. 
right click and say set the ground plane and origin. So that determines the origin, the 0, 0, 0 point inside Cinema 4D. And now I want to add a solid and a camera. So I click away from there. I hover over here and look around a little bit for something that kind of matches the row there, like that. Click on that. Right click and say create solid and camera. And now I'm going to export this comp. When I export it, the only things that will export are the solid and the camera, not the video. The only things that will make the trip from After Effects to Cinema 4D are solids, null object layers, cameras, and lights. So I go up here and go File, Export, Max on Cinema 4D Exporter. Go to my desktop again, go to my exercise files, and save this as Vineyard. I need to import that again, so I double click, Import Vineyard. Now I select it, and then go Edit Original. Or I could just go to Cinema 4D and open it there, but I'll follow the standard workflow here. Go to Edit, Edit Original. That'll open up right inside Cinema 4D. And it doesn't look like much is happening, right? It's just the solid layer and the camera. You can watch the animation here. So you know if you put something there in place of that solid layer, then the camera back inside After Effects will follow it very well. So I'm going to replace this with text. So I'm going to go up here, click on the spline, go down to text, add that. And it's just tiny down there at the origin. So I'm going to click the zero key here so you can see that. And I'll extrude that by going up here, go to extrude nerves, drag that into extrude nerves like so. And we can do the same routine as before. Click on that, make it a little bit bigger, and go to caps and do the same thing like that. Let's add material to that. Go to the content browser here, back up a notch. We'll go to glossy, and let's say get the circular glare red like that. Drag it to that one like that. But this will be at the origin, so we need to put it on top of that solid layer. So you go back to objects again. Open up this. There's the solid. Click on it. Go to its coordinates. These two guys are active because they were before. Copy that. Controller Command C. Now go to extrude nerves. Make this guy active. Controller Command V. And it disappears again. Let's click on this and press the O key. And you may be surprised at the angle you're seeing this at. I'll pull back a little bit so you can see it better, like so. If we click this a little bit, you'll see that it's a tiny thing inside that solid layer. So we'll click on the extrude nerves and make it much, much larger. Go over here, we just drag it up like that, make it much bigger. Now we can get rid of that cell by just unchecking it. If we want to take a close look at this, we can turn off the camera for a moment and press on this again and press the O key. We can take a look at it here with the default camera. If we want to change this text, for example, we can go back over here, go back to object and type in, let's say, vineyard. Click away, and it'll change that text. If I want to add a light now, I can go back to the camera view like this. I can add a light, do an omni light like that. Lift it up a little bit so I can see it on top of the vineyard a little bit like that. Make it a little bit brighter, perhaps. Take a quick render of this. Right now, all we have is text, and it'll be nice to make sure we can position it properly against the vineyard video. So you can do that by adding a background object. Go up here, add background. And now I want to add a material to the background that has the video in it. So make a new material down here by double clicking, open it up, go to color, go out here and click on this ellipsis and track down that video here inside the working files assets folder. There's the video, double click on it, say no and close this and add this to the background. Just drag it up to the background like so. And there it is. And now you can see the vineyard relative to it. So you might want to select the vineyard and make it a little bit larger and you can position it a little bit better perhaps knowing that no matter where you put it, the camera will properly track it because that's how the camera was designed to make sure this thing stays put as the camera moves. It's really very clever how the camera tracker works. And now I'll delete the background. We don't need that anymore. And I'll save this, Controller Command S. I'll go back to After Effects. And that file shows up here just with that little text there. I can put it now on top of this video here and I don't need the camera tracker in here or the solid layer anymore. I'll take this down there and put it in there like this. And I'll turn off the solid and I'll turn off the camera tracker because the camera inside this C4D file will now properly follow this. I can go along like this and it will stay stuck there in the scene. And if I want to render this so you can see the vineyard looking a little bit better, I can change from software to standard final like that. And you see how nice it looks there. So this round trip workflow can be very helpful. Not only can you take a standard 3D comp and export it into Cinema 4D and bring it back into After Effects, but you can also take a comp that uses the 3D camera tracker and do the same thing.